my name is Mark von Doggen. I'm a lecturer in the computer science department in UCC in Cork. And we're here because I wrote a book called LaTeX and Friends. Um, the book is published by Springer and it's about publishing beautiful articles, theses and books with a software called LaTeX. Now LaTeX is freely available. It's very, very stable and it's available on Windows, on Unix and on the Mac. Um, LaTeX is used a lot in academia, for example, by computer scientists, ma uh, mathematicians, physicists, uh, but it's also used in the humanities, in the life sciences and outside academia. Okay, LaTeX provides state-of-the-art typesetting. It usually provides a serif typeface, a sans-serif typeface, a monospace typeface and an italic typeface. Uh, of course, it also provides boldface versions of these, uh, these styles. Um, but it can also access all the other features in your font files. For example, if your font provides, provides uh, special letter forms, um, then it can provide them. There may be special letter forms for, for the forms for the start or the end of a word for uh, historic letter forms and so on. Um, later can provide uh, proper small caps letters, which are useful for typesetting abbreviations and acronyms. Um, modern fonts, they provide several kinds of figures and later can make them available, uh, including proportional old style figures, which are useful for the running text. Uh, proportional lining figures, which are useful in uppercase text, and the fixed width uh, figure uh, counterparts, which are useful for tables. LaTeX provides proper kerning, which means that it knows when to override the default distance between certain pairs of letters. Uh, us usually it means reducing the distance between certain pairs of letters, for example, between an uppercase T and a lowercase letter, uh, but other combinations are also possible. Um, LaTeX also provides ligatures, which are special shapes for certain combinations of letters. Uh, many typefaces have ligatures that involve the letter F, for example, FL, FI, FF, FFL, and so on. Um, other ligatures are also possible. Uh, LaTeX is used to typeset lots and lots of languages. Um, it provides bidirectional and vertical typesetting. Um, for example, LaTeX can typeset Hebrew. It can typeset Arabic. It can typeset Chinese, and if you're interested in elves, orcs, wizards, hobbits, and talking stories about Middle Earth, then you may be glad to learn that later can also typeset Tengwar. And um, there's a common misconception that LaTeX is used only by mathematicians, computer science, scientists, and physicists. Um, to a degree, that's true because LaTeX is used a lot by these communities. However, um, LaTeX is also used in the life sciences, humanities, and outside academia. Let's give some examples. Um, LaTeX is used in chemistry. You can typeset logic diagrams with LaTeX. LaTeX is used in molecular biology. For example, you can typeset DNA sequencing chromatograms and nucleotide and peptide sequence alignments with LaTeX. Um, but it's also used in other areas. For example, uh, you can typeset Gantt charts. You can typeset syntax trees with LaTeX. You can typeset poetry with LaTeX and you can typeset music with LaTeX, and so on. Uh, so how does LaTeX work? Um, basically, it's a typesetting engine sitting on top of a Turing-complete procedural markup language. Um, and effectively, that means that LaTeX can typeset um, the things you wanted to, but also that LaTeX can compute the things you wanted to typeset, just like a spreadsheet can compute the numbers in the spreadsheet's output columns. Um, you prepare your document in a LaTeX input file, which is a basic text file, which you can create with any editor, such as Vim, Emacs, or Notepad. Um, however, many users nowadays they use a LaTeX IDE. At the start of your input file, you tell LaTeX about the document class of your document. Uh, the document class, it basically determines the style of your output document. Uh, common document classes are book, report, article, and so on. And for me, it's usually article. So once you've told LaTeX about the document class, you tell it about the title and the author of your document. The main body of your output document is defined in a special section called the document environment. Um, and in the document environment, you tell LaTeX to typeset the title of your output document, to typeset the table of contents, and so on. So using special markup commands, you indicate the start of the sectional units of your output document, and LaTeX will automatically number them for you in the output document. The rest of the input file determines what's in the main body of your output document. One of the advantages of LaTeX is that it forces you to focus on the content of the document, not on the style. For example, a mathematician who's writing a theorem will write it in a dedicated theorem environment in the input file, 
Now, the theorem environment it de determines the style of the theorem in the output file. Likewise, the mathematician will provide a proof for the theorem in the dedicated proof environment that determines the style of the proof in the output document. Um, if you write a document like this, then it relieves the user from the task of having to look after the appearance of the document. It's all done by LaTeX. Um, and it saves a lot of time, which the user can then spend on the content of the document, which is what really matters. Another advantage of this approach is that the user can see the structure of the output document by looking at the structure of the input file. For example, the theorem is provided in the theorem uh, environment and the proof is provided in the proof environment and so on. And this gives the user an extra handle on writing the document, developing the document and maintaining the document. Um, academics, they spend a lot of time uh, writing papers and these papers usually contain many citations and references to other uh, academic works. Um, these cit citations are very important, so you better get them right. Um, well, LaTeX provides excellent bibliography support and this is how it works. In the input file, the user uses commands that typeset the citations in the running text. Well, each command depends on the label that determines the cited work. An external textual database associates each, each label with the required information about the work. And this required information typically consists of the author of the work, the title of the work, the year of publication, and so on. Um, now, LaTeX, in combination with a program called BibTeX, it reads each label, gathers the information about the corresponding work from the database, and typesets the citation in the main text. Um, the task of preparing the reference section is also completely automated. All the user has to do is tell LaTeX where to print the reference section. In short, using LaTeX helps you save a lot of time. Yes, yeah, so what's the book about? Well, the book, it explains all you need to know about writing beautiful articles, books and theses with LaTeX. There are many books about LaTeX and some explain everything. What you end up with is something that's too big for a student who wants to write a thesis. My book explains just enough. Um, it's for novices who want to learn LaTeX, but also for users uh, who want to make the transition to become an intermediate user. Um, at the same time, the book can also be used as a reference for seasoned users. Um, LaTeX has been around for quite a while and there are many solutions for many problems. Unfortunately, some of these solutions aren't compatible. In my book, all solutions are compatible. The book starts with a chapter about how to produce a basic PDF output document with LaTeX how to cross-reference a sectional unit, how to cite a work, how to create one or several bibliographies, how to create one or several indexes, and so on. Um, then there's a, a chapter about typesetting main text, how to typeset characters with diacritics and other special characters, how to typeset and avoid lig ligatures, how to emphasize text, how to typeset an abbreviation or an acronym, and so on. Next, there's a chapter about item itemized, enumerated, and description lists. And there's a whole chapter about producing technical diagrams. Two chapters are devoted to presenting data with tables and data plots. Um, they don't just explain how to do the typesetting, but they also give some clues about how to design effective tables and plots. Um, there are chapters about presenting mathematics and computer algorithms. And one of the chapters is about presenting computer PowerPoint presentations. Um, there are also more technical chapters about implementing user-defined macros and environments, and these chapters explain how to automate more and less obvious typesetting tasks. The book is an interesting mixture of topics, and I hope there's something for everybody. There are a couple of reoccurring themes in the book. Effective presentation, consistent presentation, planning and developing the presentation, maintaining the presentation, and controlling the presentation. Let's have a look at these themes in more detail. Let's start with effective presentation. Uh, a common problem with reports and theses is that they have very poor tables. Um, the reason why the tables are poor is not because the tables don't contain the information, but just because the presentation is poor. For example, the format or the alignment of the numeric data in the table may make it impossible to quickly compare the numbers in the columns. As another example, it may be difficult to see the trend in the data because the data are presented in the wrong order. Um, my book has a whole chapter on presenting data with tables. It explains how to present a table with rows that are easily scanned in a horizontal direction, with columns that are easily scanned in vertical direction, and with numeric data that can be compared with ease. It also explains how to design your table so the trend of the data in the table becomes clear. And there's a similar chapter about presenting data with data plots. Uh, the second theme is consistent presentation. 
It's about presenting elements that play the same role in the document in the same consistent style and how to achieve this with minimum amount of effort. Let's assume you have a document with lots of technical diagrams. I could have also given an example about text, but the example with the diagrams is easier to understand. Some of the lines in the diagram, they draw objects in the diagrams, and the other lines and arrows are used to indicate the sizes of the objects. Since the different kinds of lines play different roles, it makes sense to give them different styles. Well, by choosing a proper style, we can make the lines that draw the objects stand out and the other lines sit in the background. For the lines that draw the objects, we may define a normal style that draws the objects in black. And for the other lines, we may on introduce a size style that draws the lines in blue. If we use the, uh, the styles to draw the lines, we ensure the presentation of the normal lines and the size lines is consistent throughout the presentation. Uh, using lines like this is similar to using layers in a CAD program where you draw certain kinds of lines and objects in certain layers. For example, construction lines are drawn in a construction layer. Well, use, using layers like this pays off, so why not use a similar approach when writing documents with LaTeX? A consistent style is only one aspect of report, paper thesis and book preparation. You also have to plan the writing of the document and develop the style of the presentation. And this brings us to the third theme, planning and development. Um, let's have a look at the previous example and let's see how LaTeX can help us develop, improve the style. Remember that the size lines in the diagram are drawn in blue. Uh, using blue is really a bad idea, so let's make them red. Um, well, since we've encapsulated the definition of the style, we can implement a global change from blue to red by making a single local change in the definition of the style. So with a similar simple change, we can draw all the size lines in a very thin line type. The fourth theme of the book is maintaining the presentation. Um, it's related to developing the presentation. To demonstrate how it works, I'll give an example of how not to do it. So let's assume you're writing a journal paper about apples and pears. And the paper's four sections, an introduction, a section about apples, a section about pears, and a summary. Well, a good paper should always provide an, outl an outline of what's in the paper. So the introduction states that section two is about apples and that section three is about pears. Um, with LaTeX, you should never, ever hard code the numbers of sectional units in your input file. But let's suppose that we do this anyway. Uh, so you write that section two is about apples and section three is about pears. And now, let's assume for some reason we decide it's better to change the order of the sections about apples and pears. This on its own uh, may require a substantial editing operation that may introduce errors. Um, but let's say that we manage to change the order of the sections without, ma without making errors. Of course, we also have to change the hard-coded cross-references to the sections about apples and pears in the introduction. And let's say we also do this without introducing errors. Well, if you maintain a document like this, then it still doesn't guarantee proper cross-references to the sections about apples and pears. For example, we may have overlooked the hard-coded cross-references to sections 2 and 3 in the summary. How to cross-reference sections properly is explained in the book. And the last theme is about controlling the presentation. Here we exploit LaTeX computational capabilities that it can compute things which it can then typeset. Um, this is similar to the functionality of a spreadsheet. Some of the columns in the spreadsheet are input columns and some of the columns are output columns that are computed from the input columns. If you use LaTeX computational capabilities cleverly, then you can produce several output documents from the same input file. For example, let's assume you have a modal input file. The style of the output document is determined by some mode. It's a style parameter that you provide when you tell LaTeX about document class. For the notes mode, the output is a printable, is a printable article. And for the presentation mode, the output is a computer presentation. Well, so far, this is pretty much similar to letting um, a different document class determine the style of the output document. But the book shows that you can do much more. For example, you can use several parts of the input file for the notes and not for the presentation, other parts for the presentation and not for the notes, and the remaining parts for both the notes and the presentation. So with this approach, you can simultaneously develop several output documents in the same input file. This helps synchronizing the presentation of the output documents. To give a concrete example, let's assume you want a table of contents in the lecture notes, but not in the presentation. 
by providing the right commands, you tell LaTeX it should only include a table of contents in the lecture notes. When you use the LaTeX input file in notes mode, the output document will be an article with a table of contents. However, when you use the input in presentation mode, the output will be a computer presentation without a table of contents. And you can use the same principle to ordinary text. Okay, now that you know a little bit more about LaTeX and friends, hopefully you'll buy the book. I'm Mark van Dongen. Thanks for watching the video.